For me, the crucifixion, um, there's two very, very central kind of uh, elements to it. Um, I'll just mention one. Um, one of the fundamental problems we have is from when we're born, as soon as we're self-conscious, conscious of ourselves, we realize that we are separated from something. As soon as there's a me, there's a you. As soon as there's an I, there's a thou. So at a very, very fundamental level, we experience separation at the very core of our being. And what we then do is we then imagine something that will fill that separation. And one of the things that, so you know, for example, a child might want a puppy. You know, they feel that, oh, if they had a puppy, they'd, feel, they'd be happier. But there's another element that comes into play. Let's imagine that the parents say, no, you can't have the puppy. Um, the child will continue often to want the puppy. And the more they say no, the more the child's going to want the puppy, until the puppy becomes something that they think will satisfy them, will make them whole, to the point they're saying, you'll never have to buy me any presents anymore, you know, I'll, I'll feed them every day, I'll walk the dog every day, right? Now, in theological language, that sense of separation can be called original sin, which simply means a sense of separation at the core of our being. And the prohibition is called the law, that thing which says you can't have something, which actually generates its very opposite, makes us want what we can't have. And so that creates the idol. The idol is an object that we think will make us whole or complete. So anything that you think will make you whole and complete is an idol, whether it's God or a car or a person. On the crucifixion, we see the temple curtain is ripped in two. The temple curtain is like the law. It's that thing which separates us from that, the holy of holy, that thing that we think will make us whole and complete. And when the temple curtain is ripped in two, we discover the truth. There's nothing in there. There's no God gas. There's nothing, no wizard. It's just empty. We realize that the God who is behind the law, the, the thing that we think will make us happy and complete is nothing. And then we discover something much more deep and much more interesting that God then is not found behind this curtain. God is found in the embrace of the world, not in seeking God out there, but rather as the ground of our being. Um, that's why the crucifixion is so interesting to me, is that, that we are being invited to participate in that experience of the loss of the thing that we think will make us complete, which you hear in the crucifixion when Christ cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The temple curtain is ripped in two. We die and we rise up different. We're now God as where two or three are gathered together. God is where we love. God is where we give water to those who are thirsty, food to the hungry, clothes to the naked, where we reach out to our neighbor, where we try to act with gratitude, with grace, with love, with mercy and joy.